Welcome in, I'm Artris, and in this video, we're gonna be going over OPO7 500 years in the future for the pre-release constructed tournaments that will be happening June 21st through June 27th. So the point of this video, we're gonna go through the card pool of cards you can draft from and evaluate which cards are going to be the best for your deck. We're gonna be doing this video a little bit differently than normal. Now, normally I will go through and evaluate each and every single card and give it a rating of F through S, based on how good I think it is for your deck in a pre-release tournament environment. However, I think what would be a better use of your time is if I just go through and talk about the general mindset of approaching a draft like this and what cards stand out in those categories. But before we go into that, if you find anything in this video useful or informative, please make sure to drop a like and a sub. It helps out the channel immensely, and I cannot thank you enough for the support. Additionally, if you'd like to talk about the One Piece card game outside of the YouTube comments, please join the Discord. The link is in the description below. We have a community of people from new to veteran players that love playing the game, love talking about it. I'd love to have you there. So for this pre-release tournament that's coming up, you're given six packs of the new set and you have to build a 40 card deck out of it with a leader of your choice. Uh, whether that leader is from an older set or a newer set, that is up to you. However, a lot of people will choose the same leaders over and over again because those leaders are and have proven to be good over time. And those are green starter deck kid, red starter deck Luffy, blue starter deck crocodile, OPO1 Red Zoro, OPO3 Yellow Katakuri, and OPO6 Green Yellow Yamato. There's other leaders that are out there that you could possibly play as well, but I think these are the most popular uh, for just their leader effects alone. However, when we're looking at the new leaders that come out for OPO7, there's a few leaders you can actually play based off of what we see here. So first off, off the bat, we have Monkey D Dragon in red, and it's an activate main once per turn. Give up to two total of your currently given Dawn cards to one of your characters. So this effect is actually really strong in a limited format. Any kind of Dawn efficiency is very much welcomed when you're coming to a limited format. The most mileage you can get out of your Dawn is great. So then we have Jewelry Bonnie in green, and it's an on the opponent's attack once per turn, pay one Dawn and rest up to one of your opponent's leader or character cards. So this is actually pretty good as well. I would consider running this because it's a five life leader. And just like Monkey D Dragon is a five life leader, that's a really strong benefit off the start is having five life uh, as opposed to like a four life leader. But the effect of being able to rest an opponent's attack, like whether it's a character or a leader, can be very strong in moments where they may be going for lethal and you need to play a little bit more defensively. We have Boa Hancock, which is a blue leader that says your turn once per turn. This effect can be activated when a character is removed from the field by your effect. If you have five or less cards in your hand, draw one card. I think that this is not the best leader to take to one of these events because there's not a lot of ways for you to effectively uh, remove your opponent's characters off the field by your own effects. A lot of the tools that help do that come from previous sets uh, and not so much OPO7. So I would probably advise not to take this leader. Then we have Foxy. Once again, another five life leader. And it says when attacking Dawn minus three, if you have three or more Foxy pirate type characters, select your opponent's rested leader and up to one character card. The selected cards will not become active in your opponent's next refresh phase. I can see this leader if you do happen to get a lot of Foxy pirates in your build, which there are a fair amount of commons and uncommons you could do that. This leader could be okay. However, you are relying on that being what you get. And so that's not very reliable overall, and I would not want to take this leader because of that. However, if you're reading the cards and seeing that, oh wow, I'm getting a lot of Foxy Pirate types, then maybe you can consider running that because this does stop Kid doing their double attacks. It stops Yamato from getting a double attack hit in. So there are some niche uses for this, but I would once again advise not taking it. Then we have Rob Lucci in black. It says, when attacking, you may trash two cards from the top of your deck. Give up to one of your opponent's characters minus one cost during this turn. I don't really think that this effect is very relevant in a limited format. Uh, you want abilities that don't have to combo with other cards because your whole thing in the limited format is you don't know what you're going to get. And so minusing a cost of a character usually means that you're trying to KO it with some kind of effect. And that also means you have to couple it up with more minusing effects, which cannot be reliable to open up with. So I don't think you would want to take this to a limited event. Then we have Vegapunk in yellow, which says this leader cannot attack. Activate main once per turn, pay one Dawn. Select up to one egghead type card with a cost of five or less from your hand and play it or add it to the top of your life cards face up. 
Once again, as with Foxy, with Vegapunk, if you're looking to build this leader in a pre-release format, you're gonna have to really hope that you open up a lot of egghead types. So a lot of yellow cards. Uh, and if you do, then that's really great. But I think that the consistency of this deck, the fact that it's a two life leader, uh, it's not good off the bat and then it cannot attack. This is probably one of the worst leaders to take to a limited event just because you do need a lot of the egghead support and it's a very specific archetype that needs very specific cards. So now that we've talked about the leaders, let's talk about what is the mindset behind drafting a deck of 40 cards in one of these pre-release formats. I like to use an acronym GRAPE to talk about the hierarchy of what you're looking to get into your deck. And GRAPE stands for Game winners, removal, advantage, protection, and everything else. G, game winners, pretty self-explanatory. These are your bombs. These would be like the S tier cards in previous videos. Uh, these cards will basically win you the game on the spot or if not within the next turn or two because they apply either a lot of pressure, a really good on play effect, uh, or require a lot of resources from your opponent in order to stay alive. And so in OP07, we get a handful of what I would consider bombs to add to the deck. So these are cards that if you open them, absolutely add them to your deck. First up, we have Isho in black. This is a reprint from OP03, and it says Dawn times one, your turn. All of your opponent's characters get minus three to their cost. That's not the important clause. The important clause for me is on play. If your opponent has six or more cards in their hand, trash two cards from your opponent's hand. So in a format where hand size is very important and your Resources are very limited. There's not a lot of card draw. If you can snipe two cards from the opponent's hand because maybe they're playing defensively enough or they're taking hits, this is a absolute bomb. It's a huge threat. On top of that, the 9,000 power body is really hard for an opponent to counter out of. It requires three cards at least in order to protect yourself from that swing. So Isho for me is a must include. Then into the new cards from OP07, we have Monkey D Dragon in red, and it's an eight cost, 9,000 power body that says Rush. And on play, give your leader or up to one of your characters up to two rest at dawn. The Rush on this body is alone enough for it to be a game winner S tier card. Uh, the on play effect also being able to give rest at dawn to your leader or your characters and pump them up is really strong as well. So just a lot of pressure in that turn when this is dropped. Then in blue, we have Mihawk, and this is not really what I would consider a bomb most of the time. However, blue doesn't really have much as far as bombs go in this set, but I do think that the stat line alone being 10,000 power is really strong. Being able to play this on eight if you're going even, uh, that's really hard for your opponent to answer. And on top of that, it replaces itself by drawing a card. So all of that with the stat lines alone, I would actually put this in a bomb S tier, but I could see where people might think that this is not necessarily a bomb in that regard, but it's probably the weakest of all of the bombs we'll show today. Then we have Stussy, which Stussy is a nine drop, 9,000 power body, and on play you may place one of your characters into the trash, KO up to one of your opponent's characters. The reason it's a bomb is because it has removal built into it, unconditional removal by the way, so it takes care of anything, and it puts a really big body on the board. So those two things combined make this a really good card to add to your deck. Then we have eight cost Sabo, which is a 9,000 power body. If you couldn't tell, there's a theme with the bombs are around 9,000 power or more, but this is an on play. You may trash one card from your hand, KO up to one of your opponents cost five or less characters and up to one of your opponents cost three or less characters. So this will be a great way to remove either a small threat or whatever it may be that you're wanting to get off the field. And then the following turn, you have a 9,000 power body to swing with. So I'd say that this is a bomb because of the removal and also the big body on it, just like Stussy. And then finally, this is the, in my opinion, the best bomb from this set. This is a 10 cost, 10,000 power body with ace. And then on play, you may add up to one card from the top of your deck to the top of your life. Then if you have two life cards or less, this character gains rush for this turn. So at the end of the game, if you need one more turn to survive, you can play this down, get a big body, trade into something, or maybe go for game and then have that extra life to feel a little bit more safe behind. There's a lot of good uses for this ace in this set for uh, pre-release. And even then, if it doesn't get the rush, you're healing up uh, past three, four, five, whatever it may be. So yeah, this card overall is going to be an auto include. I hope that I get it. I hope that you get it. I hope that uh, my opponents do not. Next up we have removal and removal is I think very cherished in a pre-release format simply because being able to interact with your opponent's board, I think is very crucial for you to long stay the game being able to either answer something they have and then 
put a threat of your own down and swing the momentum back into your favor is huge and often will win you games or push you closer to winning games. So in OP07, we do have a fair amount of removal or what I would think is pseudo removal. Uh, we do have to start off with Onami, which is a reprint from OP06. And this removal is a little bit untraditional. The banish you can consider removal, I guess, but what I'm looking at is the trigger KO up to one of your opponent's five cost or lower characters. Now, this is not always reliable removal, but it is removal nonetheless, and you might want to include this if you get it. If you get it, congrats. It's probably one of the most expensive cards in the set, but if you want to play with it and put it in your deck and hope to get the trigger with it, then I say why not. Then into the OPO7 cards, we do have Ein, which is a seven cost 6,000 power body. This is a little bit of an unconventional removal. It's an on play set up to one of your opponent's characters power to zero for the turn. So if an opponent has swung with a big body, now it is a zero cost body and you can swing your leader into it or maybe a smaller character into it and remove a big threat. So that is why I consider this more so a removal piece, even though it doesn't necessarily say KO something on the field. And the same thing with Outlook 3. Uh, this is an activate main. You may place this card in the trash, give up to two of your opponent's characters, minus 2,000 power for the turn. So this is basically like an Otama, but for two characters, uh, even though you're never going to do anything with this beyond just playing it down, this is one of those cards that I think you should add one in your deck because you can, just for two Dawn, swing into something and remove it a lot easier than you would have by stacking Dawn onto something. Then we have Karina, which this is also an unconventional removal piece. It's a blocker with an on play, give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 2000 power for the turn. So same thing as Outlook 3, being able to reduce the power of something makes it much easier to trade into it. And I consider that more so a removal piece than just a flat out, oh, KO or bottom deck or whatever it may be. So, so that is something to consider uh, when you're looking at removal. And then Blue Jam is actually just a removal piece where it's Dawn times one when attacking, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with 2000 power or less. There are a few blockers that are around that power level that this could be able to KO. So that is something to consider to put into your deck. The stat line's not awful and it is a 1k counter. Then we have Bonnie in green. Now this is not necessarily removal in the traditional sense of removing it from the board. However, Bonnie is one that on play up to one of your opponent's rested characters or Dawn do not become active during their next refresh phase. And so what this does is it can tap down and basically remove from the game for a turn a bigger character that might have been a threat for you. So this buys you a little bit of time, even though it's not necessarily removing it from the field uh, permanently, it does help you remove it from the field for one turn at least. And same thing with Boa Hancock. This is a better version of Bonnie in my opinion. It's a six cost 8,000 power body on play up to one of your opponent's characters other than Monkey D. Luffy cannot attack until the end of the turn, then place up to one cost, one or less on the bottom of the its owner's deck. So the reason why I think it's a little bit better than Bonnie is the stat lines are better than Bonnie. And of course, being able to stop an attack is also very good. And that in my opinion, is a form of removal. I feel like I'm having to defend myself here, but I there's not a lot of KO effects in this set, as you can probably see. And I think these are the best things that you can get besides that, because it does uh, swing tempo back into your favor. Then we talked about Stussy uh, in the bomb section. Uh, this is just a flat out KO, a character, unconditional, just trash one of your own and then KO someone else's. We talked about Sabo. Sabo is the eight cost 9,000 power body, being able to trash a card and then KO up to a one five cost or less and one three cost or less on the opponent's side of the field. So once again, just removing things from the field, very good. Then we have Jinbei, which this is a interesting removal that comes from life with the trigger. Return up to one four cost or lower character to your opponent's hand, then add this card to your hand. So if the card is already going to your hand, might as well use the effect with the trigger. So that is kind of a removal in itself. And then we have Monkey D. Luffy in yellow, which is a five cost, 6,000 power body. And it says activate main, you may place this character in your trash. If your life is two or less, KO up to one of your opponents cost four or less characters, then draw one card. So for five, you're removing maybe a blocker or something that could be an extra threat on the board. And then the trigger is also KO up to one of your opponents characters cost four or less. So the uh, basically the activate main, but on the trigger without having the stipulation of life. And then we have York in yellow to round us out. It's a five cost 6,000 power body. On play, you may add the top or bottom card from your life to your hand. KO up to one of your opponents cost two or lower characters. So once again, if there's a blocker on the field around two, which I think there are one or two in the set, that this will be able to take care of that. Then for A, we're talking about advantage, but what does that mean? Advantage to me is any kind of card draw or any way to be able to 
stack your deck in a way that you can draw what you need when you need it. And so there are a few cards in this set that allow you to do that. And I think these cards are very important. Once again, if you can get these cards in your deck, absolutely do so. Uh, they, I think you would want to find removal before any kind of card advantage, but maybe that's up to you. Maybe you value drawing cards a little bit more than other people. I know I do for the most part, but I think removal and advantage are interchangeable as far as like the hierarchy of like what you would like to get. So let's talk about what we see in OP07. We have Doflamingo, the OP01 blocker reprint. Uh, this is a very good card because one, it's a blocker. Blockers are great. We love blockers here. And then on play, look at five cards from the top of your deck and place them at the top or bottom of your deck in any order. So stacking your deck is very useful. You can stack your deck to know what you're going to draw on a certain turn, and that is very nice to have. Or if you don't like what you see at the top five, you can always put it at the bottom and then go from there. Next, we have Edward Weevil, which is a four cost 5,000 power body. Dawn times one when attacking. Look at the top three cards of your deck and then place them in any order you like at the top or bottom of your deck. So this is like the blocker, except it attacks and it gets the effect rather than on play and has a block. So I think I would prefer the Doflamingo. Obviously, this one is a reprint that is a special reprint. So it's going to be harder to find this, but the Edward Weevil is uh, probably going to be a little bit easier for you to find because it's a common and it basically does the same thing. It's just slightly worse. Then we talked about Mihawk, which is the eight cost 10,000 power body, and it's just on play, draw one card. We have Ace in blue. It's a five cost 6,000 power blocker. Gosh, these blockers are so good. On play, draw two cards, then return two cards from your hand to the top or bottom of the deck and in the order of your choice. So this is actually kind of like the five cost 6,000 power body Sabo in black, except obviously it doesn't give you the uh, non-KO stipulation. And the way that you are cycling your cards is you just either put them back on the top of your deck or you can put them at the bottom of your deck. So it basically allows you to cycle, which is very strong. So yeah, I really like this card. You can use it as a defensive tool. You can use it as an offensive tool and being able to draw two and essentially like bottom deck two, if you don't like what you have is really good. Then we have Marguerite, which is a blocker and it's an on play draw card, really strong, really, really strong. I really value this card highly. If I see this card, I'm probably going to be including as many copies, uh, maybe not as many, maybe like two copies just because it's counterless. But I do think that the effect of on play draw a card is really good and having something that protects your life that is not easy for your opponent to get rid of is very very nice then we have edison which is a four cost 5000 power body it's a 2k counter which you'll definitely want to include but if you so choose you can play the on play effect and if you have two or less life cards draw two trash two uh, so this is a stipulated draw two trash two you have to be at two or less which is not as good as just a draw two trash two but regardless you should be aware that this is a card that can help you out in a pinch then we have Frankie, which is another 2k counter in yellow, a four cost 5,000 power body. And the trigger is draw one card. Then if you have one or less life, play this card. So the draw one card is really good. If you have a handful of 2k counters already, or you feel like you need to be able to find a threat, you can use this and draw a card off of the life. And if you're at a low life total, one or less, then it comes out onto the field, which is nice to have an extra body. Then we have the five cost Luffy in yellow, which we talked about as a form of removal, but the part of the removal, when you activate it on the main, the last part of it is draw a card. So technically this also gives you a little bit of card advantage while also having removal built in. And then the P for protection is basically just any kind of 2K counters or blockers, anything that will help you stay alive and protect yourself from threats that are coming your way. And there are quite a few 2K counters in this set. Uh, red has Moda, green has Otama and Papag, blue has Crocodile, Law, Boa, Sandersonia. <laughs> What are these names, man? I don't even remember this character, to be honest. And then in purple, we have Sanji and Gina. Sanji is probably the best 2K counter you can get in this set because it also can be a blocker. That is a 6,000 power blocker, so that's very valuable. And then in black, we have Kaku, Baskerville, and Hattori. Yellow, Usopp, Edison, and Frankie. I believe I got all the 2K counters. If I missed any, let me know. But yeah, for the most part, if you see a 2K counter, please add it to your deck. Uh, you need as many as you can to survive. Anywhere from eight to 10 is usually good, but in a limited format, you take what you can get. And then the second part of protection are the blockers. And we covered quite a few of these already uh, with some of the other effects, but let's go over all of them regardless. In red, we have Karina, Tanaka-san. By the way, this is a very strong blocker because it is either one that you can play 
from your hand or it comes from life with the trigger. So that is very nice to see. Then we have Baccarat, which this is also a really, really strong form of protection because not only is it a blocker, but the on opponent's attack once per turn, trashing one card from your hand and giving your leader or character at plus 2000 power for the battle, very strong. So you can pitch a dead card and it essentially acts as a 2k for you. Then in green, we have Caribou, Basil Hawkins. However, this is a situational blocker. Uh, you have to have a supernova in your leader, which if you're playing kid, you have it covered. Then we have Barto, which says your turn once per turn. If a character is rested from your own effects, draw one card and then trash one card from your hand. I don't think that's going to be very relevant, but just something to note. Then we talked about Doflamingo, Ace, and Marguerite, which all have some form of card advantage. The five cost reprint Captain Kid is from OPO5, and that is one that if you have a leader that is minusing Dawn, very good for you but I don't think you're gonna be minusing Dawn too much in a limited set, so it's not as valuable, but still a good stat line overall. Same thing with Sanji, it's a good stat line for what it is, 2K counter and a 6,000 power body blocker. Obviously six is a little steep for that, but once again, we take what we can get. Then we have Chopper, which is a two cost blocker, and the on play is if your board has Dawn less than or equal to your opponent, add up to one Dawn from your Dawn deck rested. Not very relevant, but could be. Then we have Jisumanda, essentially a vanilla blocker, no added text outside of just blocker. Then we have Shaka, which this is a five cost 6,000 power blocker, and the trigger says if your leader is Vegapunk, play this card. If you're playing Vegapunk, hats off to you. I hope you do your best, but <laughs> the trigger is probably not gonna be of any importance to you. Also for protection, you can't forget about your events. So those counter events are pretty important. We have Karma Exposure, which is a one cost counter, give up to one of your leader or characters plus 2000 power for this battle. Then if you control three or more characters, that character gains an additional thousand power for this battle. So that stipulation might be easier to meet later on in the game. And then the trigger KO up to one of your opponent's four cost or lower rested characters is pretty decent as well. Then we have Snake Dance, which is a two cost blue event. Give up to one of your leader or characters plus 4,000 power during this battle, then return up to one of your characters to its owner's hand. So you're not gonna really wanna return any of your things to your hand unless you have a searcher, but I think you just use it for the two cost 4,000 power. Then we have Noro Noro Beam. This is a one cost counter event, it says Dawn minus one. Give up to one of your opponent's leaders and characters minus 2,000 power for the turn. So one Dawn and minusing two to two things I think is really good. So this is a really good counter protection event to include in your deck. Then we have Noro Noro Beam Sword. This is a two cost counter event, Dawn minus one. Give up to one of your leader or characters plus 2,000 power during this battle, then rest up to one of your opponent's characters. So the two cost 2,000 power, not really great. Then the second part of that, resting an opponent's character, regardless of cost, is really good. And we have in black, Iron Body, which is a two cost counter event. Give up to one of your leaders or characters plus 4,000 power during this battle. Then if your trash has 10 or more cards, give that card another 2,000 power for the battle. 10 cards is kind of hard to hit in these limited formats, but it's not impossible. So there are times where you could get the plus 6,000 power. So I would probably consider this if that's the case. And then in yellow, we have Blaze Slice. This is a one cost main or counter. Give up to one of your leader or characters plus 1000 power for the turn. After this, if your opponent has two life or less, rest up to one of your opponent's characters for or less. So this is not the best counter event, but it can be a counter or main. Resting something is also very nice, especially if there is a blocker on the field and you're getting close to the end of the game where you are at two life or less. And one Dawn is a really good price for that as well. And then the E is everything else. So I gotta be honest, the set feels a little underwhelming as far as like the power level goes overall in a limited set. I think in the constructed format, once we move to OP07 constructed, the format and the card pool changes a lot. But in this pre-release environment, it is a little underwhelming overall. So there's not a lot of good flat out cards that I would recommend outside of the ones that we've already seen so far. And the cards I would recommend outside of the ones we've seen so far are all vanillas. Vanillas are any kind of value cost for power. So oftentimes you'll see a four cost 6,000 power, three cost 5,000 power, five cost 7,000 power, or six cost 8,000 power. That's usually what you'll see for vanillas um, 
or these events and you're going to want to include those absolutely in your deck every time you can uh, those cards are very strong uh, the big bodies even if they don't have effects it doesn't matter just the pressure that they apply is really good so we only have a few of these in opo7 we have in red dice jinbei and scratchman apu in green black has maha yellow has vega force one but the good news here is that these are all common so these are very easy to find and you can stack your deck with i didn't really remember seeing any three cost 5000 power or five cost 7,000 power bodies, and that's okay. There's a lot of five cost 6,000 power, four cost 5,000 power bodies in this set, but uh, if you do come across these vanillas, make sure to add them overall. And everything else that we've seen so far, you should definitely add, but outside of that, uh, I would leave it up to your discretion. So there you have it. We're trying out a little bit of a different format for the OPO7 pre-release guide. Hopefully this is a lot better for you guys as the information is a little bit more concise as opposed to, I don't know, like an hour, hour and a half of going through cards. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, please make sure to let me know in the comments. Uh, hopefully you do well in your pre-release. Let me know how you do. I'd love to hear how all your pre-releases went. Let me know what you opened and also how you guys did at the pre-release. Hopefully this guide helps you all. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.